Greetings and salutations, Geo Nerds. So what's this beautiful Queensland regional city that looks like it's spent a million, probably several billion dollars spent on it recently? Uh, Pro tip, it's Ipswich. What's it got to do with this beautiful little country lane just to the north of said city and this thumping great nuclear power station in Japan? Well, I promise I'll tie this together. Hang around, we'll, we'll find, find out, out together. together. Folks, here we are today in Brisbane, of course, going down Ann Street, oh, because we can. It's a bit of fun over uh, the uh, cultural centre there, and we're going to head out today. We're going, we haven't got that far to go. We're going out to uh, just north of Ipswich to a place called Pine Mountain, across Kenmore here, and there's Pine Mountain there. And we're just going to duck on the other side of it because there's a little range here, this one here, that we're quite interested in today because there's a mineral in that range called serpentinite. And uh, we're going to have a look at it. I mean, in more ways than one. So uh, that whole range is serpentinite, but that little cutting there is where we're going to have a look because that's where it's accessible. The rest is private property and it's all covered up with grass and soil and stuff. Just pull back here, there's Ipswich, there's our old mate uh, Flinders Peak down there, uh, Gel. And uh, we'll spin around a bit just to see how far we are from, we're not from Brisbane actually. And you drive out of here in half an hour and have a look around and go back and be home for tea. Anyway, let's have a look at it. So folks, here we are, here's a fairly close up satellite view of the uh, region we're talking about, that's Pine Mountain Road and just next to that in the bottom of the image is a Pine Mountain Hall. And these bigger shot, you can see uh, the macro, the Brisbane Valley's not that, uh, Valley Highway's not that far away, Brisbane River's just there. Here's the geology, the green, that's the green, that's the serpentinite outcrop, there's a few others there but that one's accessible. Uh, and uh, we'll get a little uh, closer look at that as well. This is punching through. that pink is our old friend, the uh, Narron Leaf Urnvale Shell. It's, uh, you know, 300 million years old and um, so is the Serpentinite. Here's the LiDAR, interesting LiDAR there because it puts out the range and uh, it wasn't until I started looking and I saw the dancing girl in the LiDAR and uh, when you go to the 3D it's even more visible. So uh, we'll uh, just spin this around a little bit. Once you see it you can't unsee it, it drives you nuts. It's totally invisible. If you go back and have a look in the uh, in the, uh, in the uh, satellite photo, you can't see that at all. Uh, shows the advantage of LiDAR. So here's this little range. This is pretty much all serpentinite in this range. And uh, it's uh, got a lot of houses built on it. And, you know, so you can't go in there really. You probably walk up those driveways, but you're probably sick of dog on here. Uh, and this little cutting along here, right in front of us now, that dark area, that's a bit we're gonna have a look at because it's visible. That's quite a good cross section anyway. It's just a little hill, some grass on it. Looks fantastic. So uh, let's have a look at the magnetics because for once the magnetics show something. As you can see, the magnetics are right. This is right on a magnetic boundary. And this is where it got cooked and then didn't get cooked. Uh, when you go there, it's just a nice little country road, Pine Mountain Road. There's a cutting there. Plenty of places to pull off. It's quite safe. And uh, got a bit of a video coming up here with some sound I shot locally. Well, folks, here we are at Ipswich Way today. And this is something unusual in South East Queensland. This is an outcropping of serpentinite. Uh, probably a little more visible over here, the green. We'll go and have a look at it in a minute. It outcrops right along here, but as usual, road cuttings. There's your answer. Let's go and have a closer look at it. Apologies for the shitty uh, quality there, but that's what happens when you drop your phone too many times. That's what it ends up looking like. So there it is. You can see the green hue in the rock. Serpentinite. Now, minerals that travel this with the travel with this one of them is asbestos 
So we'll have a quick look, see if we can see any in the rock here before we get rained on. So here's a really nice illustration of the green. The outer bit, the, of course, the stuff on the surface has been oxidised, but you can see the green in this. And uh, I've grabbed a couple of pieces off here to take home and put under the microscope for you. So we'll have a look at that. But uh, yeah, this is, uh, it's not an uncommon mineral in the world, but uh, it's not that common in Queensland, especially southeast Queensland. So folks, here's a really nice piece of serpentinite. What is serpentinite? Well, it's a hypermafic, which means it contains a great deal of, in this case, olivine. Uh, a lot of silica, and it's slimy to touch. When you touch these rocks, they're slimy. Here's a chemical formula. Notice this one's based on magnesium. They can be based on nickel, but sorry, based on nickel, but these ones aren't. And uh, it comes in a few different types. Uh, we won't bother with that here, but how's it formed? Well, what happens is when oceanic crust is subducted under uh, continental crust and it remelts, it takes with it a crap ton of water, which is your volcanic arcs, etc. But if it gets the right mineral conditions and the right secret herbs and spices, it can form serpentinite. And other wonderful minerals that are part of this group are the most notorious one is, of course, asbestos. And to some degree, all serpentinite can contain asbestos, even if it's in microscopic amounts, but sometimes you can see pockets of it. I didn't see any of that out at Pine Mountain, but you know, I only looked at two or three pieces of rock, who would know? So once this stuff gets subsucted, it gets, it gets re, uh, it finds its way back to the surface and you get these serpentinite, usually uh, dikes in, in volcanic structures, which this is. And you might remember my video on the uh, Mount Mead talc mine. Well, there it is. There's the dike there. You can see the green stripe. And talc is another uh, serpentinitic mineral because its chemical composition is almost the same, but it does have a different structure. And uh, asbestos, talc, serpentinite, well, uh, you might remember these dirt bags. A cost of nearly $9 billion, which I think they got off very cheap, for knowingly using talc that contained asbestos. Anyway, T-Rox, off your soapbox. Let's have a look at some of the micro photographs I took up there. Well, as usual, I forgot to take my hammer with me that day. Fortunately, there was bits of it lying around on the ground, nice and fresh, like this. You can see the green olivine in there. I got up a bit closer here, you know, limits of microscope. Something that was interesting, however, is the under UV. This stuff is awesome. Imagine finding a rock that looked like this, man, that's a gem. Anyway. Uh, you can also see the inclusions that are fluorescing in this. Some of these are actually fluorescing. I suspect they're fluorite chemical, fluorine, fluorite, something like that. But anyway, that's the microstructure. I know, I know, I know. What about the nuclear power stations? Coming right up. So I suppose we've got to have a quick look at what happens inside a uh, nuclear reactor in a power plant. Neutron comes in, smacks the atom, splits, gives off some more neutrons, smacks another atom, etc etc what you end up with is lots of neutrons more neutrons than you need especially if there's plutonium involved so these neutrons try and get out of the reactor now they're stopped by a lot of things but they found that 12 centimeters of serpentinite drops the neutron flux by sixfold this is what it looks like as you can imagine any neutron trying to get through a foot or two of this is just going to hit so much serpentinite and serpentinite's full of hydrogen and it slows the neutrons down and then they get captured. So in a nuclear power station, they would use this uh, serpentinite concrete in places like this. They also use, um, they put borax in it, so it's borated concrete, which also captures neutrons. It actually captures them. Serpentinite doesn't capture it, it slows it down. So anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed that little journey from Ipswich to a nuclear power station in Japan. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. I'm bored. I've got to get out and do some more filming, but I'm a bit crooked. I'm getting better though. Thanks to you all the new subscribers. I saw them all. I hope you enjoyed that uh, Starlink stuff and the um, Get Smart stuff I did. Keep, Keep rocking. T-Rocks out.